even the way you are perceived in people's minds can affect how much they want to pay you, how willing they are to work with you, how willing they are to refer you to other people. Do you think branding played a role in how the African continent is currently perceived? There was a very deliberate effort to create the African brand. So how long do you yeah. think it will take until we Africans will be able to write our own narrative of how the African continent is. So there's no easy answer to that. And branding is such a large concept. It has to do with psychology. It has to do with emotion. What's the difference between, you know, just being able to create a logo or a poster and actually doing branding? Similar to how, for example, um, the fact that you can change a tire doesn't mean you're changing it. The ability to dream usually has to do with what you're exposed to. If you are an entrepreneur who's always on Facebook and on Instagram and all you're, you're watching is pet videos every day, that's the limit of what you're going to be exposed to. I am a university student. I want to start working on my personal brand. Where should I start? The first question you need to ask yourself is why? Uh, so my guest today is Sidney Scott, a Ghanaian entrepreneur who has been listed on Forbes 30 under 30. He is the founder of Workspace Global, a tech platform that provides entrepreneurs with branding services at scale. And he is on a mission of helping 1 million ambitious entrepreneurs build great brands through finding clarity of purpose. Sidney Scott, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Renato. I'm um, really excited to be here. I always love, like, I've always loved your enthusiasm since you reached out. And uh, let's just have a great conversation today. I'm really sure it's going to be amazing and, and people watching this will learn a lot from it and find it interesting too. So to start us off, I have a couple of brands. I'm going to mention two brands in each category and you'll have to choose one brand. Oh, wow. Ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, Microsoft or Apple? Apple. Okay, Amazon or Walmart? Amazon. Burger King or McDonald's? Ouch, that's a hard <laughs> one. Uh, McDonald's. McDonald's. Last one, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Coke. Great. Uh, so why did you choose the brands that you choose? Um, yeah, so, I mean, a lot of these brands have inspired my journey um, as a brand strategist. Um, mm -hmm. They... All of the, I mean, all the brands you've mentioned have done an immense amount of work on their, 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 their building their brands and building their identities and building love, um, brand love in the world. Um, but I feel like for the ones that I've chosen, those are the ones that I connect with a bit more. You know, um, I'm an Apple lover. I've, I've loved everything that Apple does um, in terms of um, Amazon, like, you know, they also have a very strong customer centric brand mm -hmm. um, concerning uh, McDonald's and Burger King. That, that was a tough one, though, but um, McDonald's has <laughs> really you know, also pushed with very creative ad campaigns um, and has made a lot of very amazing social statements, actually, um, you know, within the last few years. Um, so I'm really quite impressed with um, the work that these people have done. Yeah. That's interesting, and thank you for sharing. Well, before we actually get into how this brand inspired you, quick question: What did it mean to you being listed on Forbes 30 under 30? Oh, it meant the world to me, honestly. Um, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, um, there's a lot of things that are in your head, right? Like, you know, you are pushing, you are, you are making all the decisions. You know, all, everything that happens falls on your lap, right? But when you get awarded and recognized for it, it change that changes your perspective. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. It yeah. lets you validate what um, you've been doing. It puts you on a platform and gives you access to lots of other people to create that impact. I I wasn't on a mission to um, serve a million entrepreneurs many years ago. Mm -hmm. But after Forbes, for example, like it became all the more real. Do you get what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like now, you know, I do have that level of access. I do have that global recognition to do that. So Forbes, Forbes was, was, it was a big deal. I was very excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you also mean that it was able to connect you with probably some of the clients that you have been working on? Because, because for real, you have actually worked with uh, an extensive list of clients, including uh, the World Bank, UNICEF. Ghana National Petroleum Corporation and Tulo Oil. I mean, these this are, this are big names out there. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would say, I mean, Forbes, Forbes made that easy, but we, we did already have clients like that on our, on, on our, on our list, and we still mm -hmm. have a, a few more. But the only thing is that um, in terms of the, the larger mandate of a company, we've shifted mainly to focusing on entrepreneurs. 
whilst the corporates are in the background who support, um, you know, through their work, they support us to be able to um, give subsidized rates to entrepreneurs, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a nice balance. We do a lot of entrepreneur work, but we also work with corporates and they all like feed a very nice ecosystem, you know, for, for, for branding Africa, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and what's, what's the best experience that you have had working with clients? I mean, who's the client that gave you the best experience when it came to, you know, you doing oh, what you're doing? <laughs> that's, that's too hard. That's, too hard. <laughs> that's too hard a question. Um, I mean, I always start with one of my first clients. Um, that is a, a lady called Nanachim Danso, um, who runs a social enterprise called Maza. Yeah. Um, what they did was they helped um, pregnant women in rural areas get access to healthcare um, through um, tra motorized tricycles. And uh, we had to build a brand for um, their, their global presence um, for them to be able to raise funding with USAID, mm -hmm. you know, and a few other echoing green, et cetera, et cetera. But also build a brand in a way that the local people who didn't even speak English understood what they were trying to do. And that has been an amazing success story in terms of all the people that were helped. We call them Maza babies. Every baby that was born from being saved by these um, tricycles you know has been um, just an immense um, contribution to 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 the whole mission but the beautiful thing is it shows how with branding they were able to raise funding with branding they were able to win awards do you know what i mean like there's there's a, there's a lot there's a very deep connection there that I, I really appreciate but i have so many others um so many other entrepreneur or brands that have um really broken through in Ghana, in Nigeria, you know, and across the world um, that, that are real, making real impact with their brand space. So that is a tough question to answer, yeah. Well, that's, that's really interesting because I believe with branding, you actually work with entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs are people who create solutions to some of the most, pro I mean, exactly. problems in their community. So you witness all these change makers in action and, you know, you're also supporting them uh, in, 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 in bringing the change that lo they're looking forward to bringing. Who was Sydney Scott growing up? I mean, if I had the same opportunity of going to the school that you went to, you went to, I mean, would I ever imagine that you'd one day be in a mission of helping one million ambitious entrepreneurs? Yes. So I was saying that um, you actually would have um, because I'd always been a, a slightly different child. Um, I went to high school at the age of 12 when everybody goes at the age of 15. Um, I was involved in quite a few initiatives um, back in high school. But then what the, the interesting thing is, I became an entrepreneur in university. And uh, that was when I started my first business, which actually, I mean, it did a very good job at the time, but it did tank because it wasn't sustainable. But anybody who saw me from then was like, mm, this guy would, you know, would try to do some amazing things with himself. And I was really, like, I think it was quite, uh, I won't say obvious, but you know, with the trajectory that I was going into, it's not surprising that uh, I'm, I'm pushing this mission, yeah, so. That's interesting. You said you went to high school at the age of 12. How is that possible? Ridiculous. <laughs> so so um, I, we, I skipped a few classes. Um, so I didn't go to third year. I didn't go to fifth year. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't go to, we have in, in Ghana, we have a junior high school, which is three years. And then senior high school, which is three years, but now I think it's four. But um, so, I, I did junior high school year one, year two, and then I skipped year three again, took the exam for senior high school early. So I was, I was three years ahead of everyone. Uh, you know, yeah, it, it has its pros and cons. I mean, it's it's not all rosy, but um, yeah, it was quite an interesting one, yeah. Oh, that's also interesting because, I mean, in, in Tanzania, I mean, we have secondary school and high school and, you know, you go for secondary school four years and then you go to high school for two years. Well, it's the same amount of time, but, you know, it's just, differently that you guys have junior and senior and you have secondary and, and advanced level. Yeah. And when was the first time that you got introduced to, to branding and, and what branding meant and, and what made you fall in love with branding? So it really started with, again, um, the first business that I, I had, uh, I began um, called Moonlight Cafe. What had happened was, um, I mean, we were creating artworks and stuff for these because it, it's a it's a spoken word live music and stand up comedy platform that brought up underground performers, mm -hmm. and we had to create flyers, we had to create videos, we had to create you know all these things, and I, I really didn't like paying for it to be honest. But the the, the, the <laughs> other thing also was that we weren't able to connect a lot with corporate clients 
and corporate um, sponsors, right? So we started to realize, okay, like so people just started to tell me, listen, you need to work on your brand. You need to work on your brand. You need to work on your brand. Mm-hmm. Like, what is this brand? <laughs> <laughs> So, so I started to do a lot of research to understand how first to make some of the things that I needed to make, like the flyers and stuff. Mm-hmm. But in that, I also was learning about the bigger um, concept of branding, you know, the idea that even the way you are perceived in people's minds can affect how, how much they want to pay you, how willing they are to work with you, how willing they are to refer you to other people. And that can be curated, the colors you choose that, you know, it was a whole, it was very exciting at the time. Wow, um, that's, that's really interesting. I mean, I'll later ask you a question on, on the role that branding plays in, in, in terms of helping not only university students and high school students, but almost everyone when, when you speak about, you know, like personal branding, right? Um, Oh, because you also spoke about when we were in school that everyone was telling you, you know, that you need to work on your branding, you need to work on your branding. And you also spoke about, you know, you know, posters and, 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 and such designs, which are visual identities, right? So, so what's the difference between, you know, just being able to create a logo or a poster and actually doing branding in that specific work? What's the difference? So similar to how, for example, um, the fact that you can change a tire doesn't mean you're an engineer. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't make you a mechanic. So the and branding is such a large concept. It's, it has to do with psychology. It has to do with emotion. Do you understand? Um, and and I, so it's like all the intentional activities you do to be able to curate the emotion and perception that someone has of a business or a person. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's a very deep concept it's and and being able to create one element of it which is a logo or create a website or it's you know you are able to create the tool but the tool doesn't necessarily it's not the only thing that would help you dominate the whole concept do you get what i mean and another thing that i always say is you can't build a brand in a day do you get it a branding is an ongoing consistent thing so even if you build a flyer today Mm -hmm. in two weeks you have to do something else that you know you know so people need to understand that you know it's good that people are graphic designers it's good that people are copywriters but all these things contribute to a larger concept but on their own Mm -hmm. they are very different from or let's say they are not sufficient enough to encompass the whole of branding you know that's that's just where the difference comes in yeah and and so with workspace global right uh, the company that you founded what are some of the things that you guys do in terms of you know so, branding and helping businesses, it, it, it's interesting. So what we 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 do something we call we start with discovery, which is basically helping people understand, see clearly, and understand their problems, understand mm-hmm. what they're trying to do with their brand. You know, so we always do that. Actually, um, most of the time for free, with any entrepreneur who would come to us, we will talk to you, would ask you the right questions and things, and that's something that, that's been very useful to most people. But then we also then build the tools you need for branding. So all sorts of designs, any form of graphic design you need, we would do any sorts of websites, we would do any social media management, illustrations, you know, so all the different components of what we just discussed um, and that contribute to the larger picture we will do. And we also help you with that overall brand strategy or journey as well. You always have somebody you can talk to who will tell you or guide you with what you should do. You know, in terms of your business and your brand. So that's what Workspace Global does and offers to the world. So it's actually, I mean, a long process that you sit down together with entrepreneurs and you figure out what works for them and, you know, where they are, where they're heading to and how Workspace Global will help them get to where they want to get. That's interesting. Um, now, I'm going to ask you a question that might be um, a little bit difficult for you, right? Wow. Chimamanda so Adichie. <laughs> so Chimamanda Adichie, um, uh, the Nigerian uh, writer, you know, one of the famous um, writers in Africa, spoke about the danger of a single story, right? Mm-hmm. And and when we are speaking about that concept, right, and 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 looking at the African continent in general, so when one of my classes, I realized that um, Africa, the size of African continent is not as how it's perceived to be. It's larger than that, right? So, do you think branding played a role in how the African continent is currently perceived? Yes, definitely. I mean, um, when you think about it, there was a very deliberate effort to create the African brand, 
right? Mm -hmm. And the, bra the brand of Africa was not entirely created by Africans, right? There's been other parties that have influenced that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting when you said the danger of a single, a single story, um, the mm -hmm. idea that, you know, it is important for us to tell our own story, right? And telling yeah. our story means we get to build our own brand. When we build our own brand, we start to then almost dictate and influence the way the world perceives us. But because over the last 500 years, uh, last 600 years, a lot of things concerning Africa have been determined outside Africa. We mm -hmm. haven't had a direct role to play as much in the brand that we have. It's changing now, though. The new Africa, which I wouldn't call it the new Africa. It's, it's what Africa has been the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, it's very vibrant, very innovative, very, very floral, very flamboyant. I, I love how the new African brand is and it's building and we're telling our own story. And that's just something that we, the world cannot ignore and something that I definitely encourage. Absolutely. And, and I mean, I, I, I do believe that's true. Everything you said is true. But I mean, how you said you said that branding is not a single day uh, job, right? So how long do you yeah. think it will take until we Africans will be able to write our own narrative of how the African continent is and should be perceived? So there's no easy answer to that, um, mm -hmm. because the idea is consistency. OK, so if we continue to do something every day, if, if somebody wakes up in the morning every day and tells you, I am happy every morning consistently for one year, you're going to be like, oh, that's a man who always says in the morning that he's happy. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you can't say if it's going to take three days or two months for that perception to stick within your mind. But as long as that, that story is told consistently, we are always in contributing to the brand that we're creating. So that's just my perspective on that. Yeah. So regarding African trying to do that and, and trying to say the message every single day, Rwanda has actually started doing that, you know, with the slogan of visit Rwanda. Yeah. Yes, I loved it. I loved how they, 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 they've really been intentional about creating this brand. Yes. And actually, they're putting in a lot of effort in terms of resources and, and you know, like such as sponsoring Arsenal and NPSG, and, yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> which is really interesting. Um, it's, it's really nice. Yeah. I mean, so as an entrepreneur, Right. Um, mm. I know you do branding for African entrepreneurs and businesses and organizations, right? But what did it take for you to brand yourself as a business that also oh, helps? Wow. That, 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 that is a that is a hard one. Um, <laughs> I'll be very honest with you. I, I've been putting a lot of work in my personal brand, but my personal brand actually only really took off mm -hmm. when I started saying this, and I'm going to serve no matter what it took, right? So when my brand became less about me and what I was doing for the world, mm -hmm. um, I realized that it, it started to, to, to um, propel, okay? It, it, I start, you know, like when I, I'll give all these um, public speaking um, gigs, you know, like in, in across the world, I would mm -hmm. um, talk to entrepreneurs, go talk to students, speak to corporates. It was always just about giving, right? And that's really what made the big difference because um, other people focus on their personal brand and um, focusing on their personal brand um, entails what they're going to get, right? Mm -hmm. Which technically it's the other way around. If your personal brand should be about what you're going to give and then a byproduct of that is what you get, you know? So that's really what um, I feel like my has really cemented my personal brand around Africa and around the world, yes. That's interesting. You actually spoke about giving and, and the problem that a lot of entrepreneurs face in the African continent is that when they start their businesses, they just want to make money straight out, right? They, they, they don't want to, to go out there and, and try and brand themselves by first starting to help people without actually having them to pay, right? Um, and it's a challenge that well, a lot of people are actually facing. So let's assume there is an entrepreneur watching this video and has that challenge right now. How would you help them go about it? So firstly, I'll just give a disclaimer. Um, starting a business for money, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? There's, there's like the, the whole concept of business is to give value for return. Now, the world has moved on or, or to a, a space where entrepreneurs are problem solvers. So if you're not solving a problem, you are not going to be successful, right? So you, you don't focus on making money, you focus on solving the problem. Solving the problem, a synonym of that is giving value. A syn like, you know, and if we go deeper, giving value is giving. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So if you, if you strip it down to giving value to people who need it to solve a problem so they pay you, 
that's how it should go. So you don't, you don't jump first and say, give me your money because mm-hmm. I can do this. You start first by saying, okay. And, and I always say that when you start a business, don't jump too quickly to serving a hundred people. Just mm-hmm. serve one person, serve them well. Ask them, what, what about what I did was good? What about what I did should I repeat? Mm-hmm. Understand that, note that down. Ask them if they can recommend you to one other person so you can serve them in that same way. And that is how you start a business. If, if you focus on giving value to one person, one new person every week or every day, you'd be surprised at how powerful and how, uh, how quickly your business is going to grow. Do you get what I mean? So yes. it's just about the mindset. It's, there's nothing wrong with pursuing money, but, if, but the idea is start with the concept of value and how to transfer value from yourself to other people and to people who can pay for it. I also don't mind in terms of like, I think social enterprises are also very strong. I'm like, I have a social enterprise myself, which is when you give value, but not necessarily for financial return. That's also something to consider. But then after that, you collaborate with other people who are interested in that. They pay you to be able to give value. So that's just generally how it works. If you understand how value works, it will change the way you pursue business. Well, you spoke about uh, starting small, and I'm going to ask you a question about value. But let's speak about yeah. first starting small. So Vutsi, the Bekwayo, uh, the, the South African entrepreneur, also spoke about, you know, the whole idea of starting small while thinking big, right? Now, now, a challenge that they might probably face is that, well, they might start small, but then mm-hmm. fail to think big right? They start small because because always, I mean, success is also about how you execute your idea, right? Execution. And and for them, how can they start small and think big? But at the same time, while they're thinking big, they don't distract themselves in terms of, okay, let me start with a thousand rather than only starting with a single customer that they, they're going to save. And so how can, how can they be able to do that? The ability to dream usually has to do with what you're exposed to, okay? And um, I think it's very important for people to be very intentional about what they expose themselves to. So, for example, if you are an entrepreneur who is always on Facebook and on Instagram and all you're, you're watching is pet videos every day, that's the limit of what you're going to be exposed to. It's not very easy to be able to say that, okay, even though I have a business that is serving five customers, one day I can serve 500 because you are not exposing yourself to the potential that you have, right? And you have to be intentional. Your mind is a a resource, right? Your mind mind doesn't automatically do things. You have to feed it. Do you get what I mean? And I have been very intentional about feeding my mind with, you know, big stories, um, you know, highly successful people, things like that, right? You know, even the the scale of problems (laughs) is even something you can expose. Do you get what I mean? Like the idea that, there are entrepreneurs in every part of Africa who are trying to brand themselves. It's something that I was exposed to when I was looking at, are there other people like me who need this kind of help? Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So you have to be intentional about what you expose yourself to, to be able to dream. Dreams don't just miraculously pop up into your head. It's based on what you've seen, what you've experienced, who you admire, um, you know, the kind of content that you're consuming every day. So I just say that set up your life in a way that exposes you to stories, to inspiring um, 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 people, to um, even the the scale of problems that need to be solved. Other people who are going through this, if you set yourself up for those things, those things will constantly be fed into your head and you'd always be able to dream beyond what is immediately around you. So it's, and and you need to be disciplined enough to keep, stay small, um, you know, or, or start small, but you also need to be disciplined enough to continuously think big. So that's just my take on that. Yeah, that's powerful. I mean, uh, the environment that we are in influence our dreams and how we, you know, the goals that we want to achieve. So last question before we close up. Um, I am a university student, right? Or oh, I'm in high yeah. school right now, right? And, and I want to start working on my personal brand. Where should yeah. I start? The first question you need to ask yourself is why? Why do you want to start your personal brand in, in the first place? But but not just about why do you want to start your personal brand, your personal brand, but why do I exist? What do I want to do with myself at all? Right? Yeah. I have there's multiple ways for you to, to take a look at that. But and the first thing that I usually recommend is ask yourself who do you want to help? Who do you enjoy helping? That's another thing because sometimes people just pick random or I want to help bankers right but then you have no interest in that you get it 
who yeah. do you really within your heart want to help? When you figure out who you want to help, you ask them, what do they need help with, right? Mm -hmm. So based on that, you will start to become, um, you start to develop yourself based on giving value in terms of that on your social media. So let's say I determine that I want to help 12 year olds um, who are exploring their artistic talents, right? And I ask a few of them, oh, so what do you need? And then they go like, oh, sometimes they don't know what apps they need to use. Do you get what I mean? Or they don't know, you know, so I go like, okay, with my social media, I'm going to teach people about apps that they need for artists, like 12 year olds. Um, um, I'm going to teach 12 year olds about the apps they need to use for to explore their artistic talent. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And then I consistently do that. You just consistently do that every day, give value, every day, give value. Also, for any university student out there who is looking on working their personal brand, Sydney Scott recommends three steps. The first one is figuring out why do you want to do it? And the second one is who do you want to help? And the third one being what do they need help with? And is it something that you're passionate about? Thank you very much if you have watched till the end of this. And I hope you subscribe because we'll have more guests like Sydney Scott who will share their stories that I'm pretty sure will not only inspire you, but teach you the ways of an entrepreneur and a leader. Until next time, thank you for joining us today. Peace out.